Well hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. So tonight I've come up to Little Drum Wood. Haven't walked this wood before. Um, it's in the Trossachs area in Scotland and there seems to be a wooden trail, wooden path that takes us down to the loch, which is Loch Veneca. So join me tonight and let's see where the journey goes. The low sunlight sets the valley ablaze and the fresh coldness returns. So we've reached what is a bench, but it's also a musical instrument. So Carl Ann's going to give it a wee tap. <laughs> right, so we're just going to walk on. It seems to be a themed area for walks. So it'll be interesting to see what else we discover. As we walk over these stepping stones, these stepping stones have got insects carved in them. So as you can see, we'll move across. There's another one. And there's the last insect there. Look at a sculpture of a deer up here. Oh, I'm out of puff, that's a really, a really steep hill. There's the sculpture. That's really nice. It's sculpted out of metal and it's uh, shaped with all the leaves. So we're following the green trail tonight, um, which <laughs> we're not quite sure where it takes us, but uh, hopefully we'll end up at the waterside at some point on uh, some nice carvings on the signs. Very nice. So I've stopped off here just before we start walking up another hill, um, because there's a really nice composition in front of me with these trees and it would help if I took the lens cap off so let me see what we've got here because the composition that I've got is I like the the tops of the ferns and the tops of the ferns just look like a green carpet all the way up to those trees now <laughs> so the challenge we've got just now is the wind so I have and I feel a wee spit of rain. Let me just change that to two second timer. Right, I'm going to, because it's so dark and because I'm getting a spit of rain, I'm going to do a three exposure compensation. And then that way I'll get an underexposed, normal exposure and an overexposed. And then I'll share that image with you now. come across a wee sign in the path and effectively what it's saying is if you look at the other side of the glen now imagine it in 50 years time when that was teeming with rich woodland and life all over that hillside so it does say that we've given nature a helping hand though with the aid of many volunteers and supporters, the Woodland Trust has planted over 450,000 native trees there. So that's really good. And you can see a lot of the trees, that is quite distant, so they must be really tall. But uh, it's a beautiful view. Not that photogenic, but uh, we'll keep walking and we'll look for potential images. We're uphill, now we're kind of walking back downhill. So we'll just navigate these steps and then I can see over there the other side there's another steep hill that we've got to climb. Wow, no wonder there's loads of benches 
all over this trail for walking. We'll catch up at the top. Alright, so as we're walking along the path, we've got we've come across a couple of sculptures. There's a metal sculpture there. Not quite sure what that's meant to be. And then we've got like a cone shaped a hollow sculpture here made out of wire or metal and covered in natural bracken but I'll turn around and let you see so what I'll do is I'll take a couple of shots of these structures and then I'll share those images with you now off the beaten track a wee bit because we're trying to find what they call black water marshes and that's at the edge of Loch Venica so we'll keep walking and hopefully we'll find it soon. We've walked to the bottom of that path that we were on and we can now see the loch so that's a good thing. <laughs> so we're just going to walk along and see if we can find the edge um, of the lock and see if there's any photo opportunities. Alright, so we've just walked down through that forest and it's an ancient, reputed to be an ancient forest but we've come down, we've walked along the path, we've come through the ferns and then we've now reached the Blackwater Marshes at the end of Loch Venica and that mountain that you can see in the distance is Ben Venue, or Venue, depending on how you want to pronounce it. And if I walk round, what you'll start to see, we've got a little beach area here. And then, if I walk closer to the water, oh, there's some nice, there's a nice wee composition there, with that tree and Ben Venue. Although I would want a slow shutter speed to smoothen down the water, but it's quite windy, so the leaves are getting thrown about. So we would probably have to do a fast shutter speed for the tree, and then a second image that has a slow shutter speed for the water, and then merge the two together. And then over there, there's a wee tiny lone tree as well. Let me see if we can zoom in. This might not work with this lens, but over here, there's a kind of lone tree. So if I use the 70 to 200, and use a slow shutter speed, that could also be a nice image because there's a really nice cluster of trees there at the end and as I turn the camera around, there's a path that follows the edge of the loch here that we could explore which <laughs> Carlad's delighted to hear about <laughs> Right, so what I'll do is I'll take some images and then I'll walk you through one or okay, two Okay, so for this image, what I've got is that tree I've got the edge of the loch sweeping for left and then sweeping back out again. I've got Ben Venue in the background. I've got my settings at f16. I've got a twentieth of a second ISO 100 and I'm focusing in on the mountain. I'm also going to do a three shot exposure compensation just so that I've got an underexposed normal and overexposed image. And the reason I want that is the sky is quite dark but there's also some really strong highlights above the clouds um, so if those highlights become too strong I can actually cut it out and crop it so what I'll do now is I'll move a little bit closer this wind is really really strong um, I'll move a little bit closer and I'll get a different composition and then what I'll do is I'll change my lens and we might get a couple of close-ups of that tree with the mountain in the background and we'll take a shot of the Lone tree over on the far bank. All right, so I've set 
the camera for a long exposure shot, although it's really, really windy and there's big dark rain clouds coming towards us, so I think we might get beat by the weather tonight. So what I'll try and do is grab as many shots as I possibly can, even if it's off camera, so I've got something to share with you. But the one thing I haven't shared with Carl Ann tonight is Loch Venneker is famous for a big black beast and the water and it's reputed to be a kelpie and it was first well they claim that they don't know when it was first sighted but it was first documented in 1806 so who would have known it that right on our doorstep that the Loch Venneker has its own wee black beast or big black beast so there's an interesting fact for you are you scared no. <laughs> uh, right, so from a settings point of view for a long exposure, I've put the camera to bulb mode, I've focused in on the trees, although I think the wind with a long exposure might disrupt them, so what I'll try and do is focus on them without the big stopper, freeze the trees and then merge the two images. I've got F8 ISO 100, put it on a two second timer, and then I'll leave that now for a minute and a half and then hopefully I'll have a really nice clear image of the water all smoothed out and then I'll take a second shot of the trees so I've got the trees frozen in the image so what I'll also do is because I can feel some spots of rain when that's finished I'll quickly take a shot of the tree and the mountain with the long leg Right, so I've set a long exposure so I can get the water and the tree. I've taken a fast shutter speed image, so I'm now doing a long exposure, but the wind, geez, oh, the wind's really, really strong. But the other interesting fact about Loch Venneker is, Loch Venneker is 3.7 miles long, and at its deepest point, it's 108 feet deep. So it's quite a considerable loch, I think it's the biggest of the three lochs in this area and uh, yeah there's quite a lot of history in Vertrosic's mansion across the water um, on the south side that was visited by Queen Victoria in the 1800s so yeah it's quite an established area full of history and obviously this area is really famous for Rob Roy McGregor so, and Rob Roy McGregor frequented all these parts in his lifetime. Right, so I'll keep, let this keep going and I'll share these images with you. I think the wind's getting the best of us and uh, if I drop the eyes on the camera you'll start to see all the really dark clouds. So we're going to walk along and see if there's any other image opportunities but we're starting to get beat quite a bit with the weather tonight and that wind is so strong. So we've walked to the end of the path but it's a kind of a dead end and the Blackwater Marsh area yeah, is quite pretty, it'd be much better if there was not so much wind, no sprinkling of rain. Um, but hey ho, we've persevered, hopefully we've got one or two images. But what we'll do is we'll head back towards the car and we'll see if there's any images that we can take along. Okay, so oh, there's a canoeist, a kayaker. All right, so we're going to end the video here. This was a wee impromptu evening walk, but we've got a wee bit of shelter here from the wind, believe it or not. 
because of all the trees that are round about us. But hopefully we can make a video out of this. Thanks to Carlan for chumming me along tonight. I think she's getting beaten by some of the rain and some of the midges have started to come at us as well. But if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please do because you know it's free. And if you press the bell notification, that'll let you know the next time we post a video. So thanks very much for watching and here's to the next video. Bye. <laughs> Bye.